I know that I speak about unforgiveness in your enemies quite a bit. It is really important. You have to make sure that you don't have any unforgiveness within you. If you do have any, make sure you get rid of it. How can you get rid of unforgiveness within yourself? Well, one easy way to do that <clears throat> is intervene with your enemy, if it is possible. Try to help your enemy in the things that they may need help in. Write your enemy a letter. Write to your enemy about the good things about him or her and what you enjoyed about that person. You don't have to speak about the negative. You really don't. You know, for instance, let's say that there is a woman or a man and perhaps you may not like everything that they are wearing, but if you look really close, there are some things that you may like about what they are wearing. So compliment the things that you like. You don't have to lie and say that you like some things that you don't like. I am not telling you to lie. I am telling you to look at the things that you do like. <clears throat> In your enemies, there are some things that you do like or that you can compliment on. Everything about a person is not bad. There are some good traits that your enemies do have. Everything about a person is not wrong. It's not bad. You can compliment something about them that is good. So write a letter to your enemy. Buy your enemy a gift. <clears throat> Give me a second, please. It does not have to be expensive. You don't have to buy them a Corvette or a diamond ring or a gold necklace and stuff like that. Now, it would be good <laughs> if you did. But give your enemy a gift. You know, it doesn't have to be a card. You can make it a card if you want to, but buy them a gift. Like, hey, I am giving you this out of the kindness of my heart. And usually they are going to accept it. They really are. Even if they don't like you, they are going to accept a gift. For instance, Years ago, I was at this job, and um, when this person found out that, or I was telling people about God, and obviously this person did not like that, so this person would just say mean things to me and stuff like that. And I noticed that at around a certain time, many of us would go and eat and after a while I noticed that this person would not eat and I'm thinking man this guy working 10 hours a day nine hours a day and not really eat so I came to him and I asked him if he was going to eat and he told me that he did not have any money so what I did at that point of time I gave him like, I think some coupons or something and some money. So everything was about $8 or something like that. And you know, when you give your enemy something, they are kind of like shocked. Like, why are you doing this? <laughs> but anyways, a long story with me and that person, but anyways, do things for your enemies, even if they don't deserve it. Because you want to, 
You want to make sure that you don't have any hatred within yourself. You want to make sure that you are not holding anything against anyone. And the more that you give to your enemies, what you are going to feel within yourself, there is not going to be this, I don't know what you call it, that inner lock within yourself, I guess you can say, that, you know, when you are angry with a person, there is this uncomfortable atmosphere or this weird feeling. When you give to people, and intervene with them more, that is going to be gone. That is going to be abolished. <laughs> I am serious. For instance, I have all types of stories for you. There was this one person that did me wrong and I did not say anything mean to him or anything like that afterward. I just didn't want that person to come near me. And when I would see this person's picture, I don't know how I can explain it. Like this feeling would come over me, not of anger, but this uncomfortable feeling came upon me like this, ugh, you know? And I said to myself, hey, I don't think I said to myself what I was going to say, but I was thinking, hey, let me write this person. Let me do things for this person because I don't want the, I don't want that feeling over me. So what I did, I believe I wrote this person twice. I believe. And after the second time, and I am going to write him a third time. And after the second time, when I see his picture now, like that weird feeling does not come over me. So what am I trying to say? If you have unforgiveness for a person, if you have hatred towards a person, what you can do is write that per Look, man. Look, 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 look. You need to do these things because you can't hold hatred within yourself. You can't hate people. You have to forgive people. And many people that I speak to or email, message, whatever else, they have some type of unforgiveness within them. You have to get rid of that. And I am trying to tell you what you can do to get rid of that. So what you should do right now, even if you don't know what to say, think about that person and write that person things that you like about that person. You don't have to mention the bad things about that person. Why? Because there is no need for that. What you want to do is straighten, straighten things out. Even if that person refuses to make things right, make sure that you attempt to try to make things right. Whatever they do, whatever. But you want to make sure that stuff is out of your heart. So write your mother, write your mother, uh, no, write your mother, write your father, write your sister, brother, whoever have done you wrong, whoever that you are hating or have not forgiven, write them, give to them, give them a gift, speak to them. Well, they are just going to continue to do me wrong. True, there is a chance that may happen, but what you are not looking at, they are going to reap what they sow. So, they are going to get punished by God. Even if you don't find out about it, something bad is going to happen to them. As my enemy or my other enemies. Like I said, when I was in sin, I did many, 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 many bad things. Many bad things. So, I am not trying to seem like 
hey, all my life I have been an angel because that is not true. And many bad things have happened to me because of how I was. So when I tell you things about my enemies or about people who do me wrong or did me wrong, look, I have done bad things too, but I am telling you these stories not to make you think that I am this great guy or whatever else because I don't care about that. I am telling you these stories because I am practicing what I preach or teach. And I am telling you what happens when I do these things. I pray that this makes sense. So in order to forgive, you have to let go. So what you need to do, if you can't speak to them right now, or if they won't allow you to speak to them, write them. Keep on writing them. Talk about the good things, not about the bad things. Oh, I really hate it when you took my girlfriend and slept with her and stuff. Why would you speak about that? You want to bury the hatchet. You want to get rid of that strange atmosphere. You want things to be straight between you and your enemy. Or if your enemy won't let that happen, at least try. I pray that this makes sense. And chances are, when you treat your enemy right, even when they do you wrong, if you continue to do that over and over and over and over again, your enemy is going to become your ally. They are going to become a person that may start doing you right. So they are going to, chances are, they are going to reframe from being your enemy to your ally or friend, I guess you want to say. It happens for me, you know, to one point, my enemies hate me so much, now they speak to me and ask me how I am doing, so on and so on. How did it get to that point? Hey, I was doing good toward them no matter what they did to me. And this is the way that you have to be. I pray that this makes sense. It does not matter how people treat you. It matters how you treat people. You want to make sure that you are right with God. You are not right with God when you have not forgiven your enemies. You are not right with God when you hate people. If you die in that way, you are going to hell. Is it worth it? Is hating a human being worth being tormented forever? Are you serious? So if I have to buy a gift or write a person or whatever, hey, let me do it because i rather do those small things than to burn in hell. And so many people holding on to these hurts and pains and stuff like that. And if you don't let that go, that is going to send you to hell. Well, Kevin, God knows my heart. Yes, he does know your heart. He knows that it is wicked if you continue to choose to disobey him. So your heart is wicked. I'm serious, man. You need to get rid of that stuff. And the way to do it is intervene with your enemy. Let me say this. I do, if I am saying this right, I look forward to do for my enemies than I do for people that I like. I do more for my enemies than people that I like being around. Why do I do that? Does that make any sense? 
it does make sense because I want to make sure that I am right with God. I want to show my enemies the love of God. I want God's love to shine through me to my enemies. I want to make sure that I am not holding anything against anyone because I am not trying to go to hell. Does this make any sense? No matter what a person have done to you, you need to forgive them. Most people that come around me, I don't want them around me, <laughs> to be honest with you. I really don't. But I take it because it is not about being around people that you like. It is about being around people so you can help them in some type of way to show them that there is a God and how servants of God treat their enemies. So in some type of way, you can lead a person to God by doing what God tells us to do. That's the point. Like I said, I would say 80% or 90% of people that I am around, I don't like being around them, for sure. But I go around them so they can see how a real servant of God behaves. And I believe this. I believe, I believe, I believe this. When I go around people and based upon how I treat them and how I speak to them and stuff like that, I believe I am showing them how a person of God should act. And that is influencing them as well. That is touching them as well. That's the point. That is the whole point. Your life, let me say this right. Let me say this right. Your life is not, to a certain extent, it is not supposed to be comfortable. It is not. Your life on earth is to be ministering to people about God. And if you know anything about God, people who minister to others or people who live for God and tell others to live for God, they have hard lives. They get persecuted. What happened to the 12 disciples and Jesus Christ? I believe John was the only one that did not die. Yes, John was the only one that did not die. Out of the 12 and Jesus Christ. If there are real servants of God, you are going to get persecuted. Bad things are going to happen to you from people because... The devil have their minds. So if you come by and teach them about God and stuff like that, they are going to try to reject it. Yes, some are going to accept it, but most are going to treat you meanly. This is the life that we live. When you choose to live for God, people who don't live for God, chances are they are going to be your enemy. <laughs> that's why we are living this life here to do what God says so when we die we get to go to heaven afterward I pray that this makes sense forgive your enemies stop playing around life is way too short when I was about six or somewhere around there, I used to think to myself, I wonder how I would be when I get 20 or older. And 
boom. <laughs> I am past that age now. <laughs> time is going by fast. Now, at that time period, I thought time was going by slow, but seeing how things are now, no, time is going by fast. So, I pray that this makes sense. Forgive your enemies. Will Kevin E. know when I was a child? It does not matter. What you went through does not matter. I remember when I was talking to this person and um, I was telling this person the bad things that I was going through with this other person. And what this person said to me, it does not matter. What happened in the past does not matter. And at that time period, I got really mad at that person. I'm like, what? I'm like, do you know the hell I went through with that person? And as time passed by, and the closer I got with God, I find that he was right. It does not matter. It does not matter. What matters is getting your life right with God and going through these tests that he gives us, then going to heaven afterward if you follow his rules and regulations. So the past does not matter. I know that may sound really harsh or it may sound like I am not being compassionate or empathetic. Look, man, if anything is going to keep you in sin, you need to let it go, man. You need to let it go. So I have told you what you can do for your enemies to get rid of that hardness. Oops, <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> to get rid of that hardness in your heart. Man. <laughs> to get rid of that hardness in your heart, I have told you what you can do. So hey, when you die, you can't say that no one taught you. Because I have. So when God say, depart from me, you can't say, oh man, that is not fair. I pray that this makes sense. God bless.